Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back with another video and this is the third video of the series where I teach you guys how to web scrape using Puppeteer and Node.js and basically I found this website called quotes to scrape.com which is really awesome. It's a website purely made for web scraping and it like it incorporates a bunch of uh, things that are nice for for us and it also makes it a little bit difficult to simulate how difficult websites are to scrape. So basically, I'm going to teach you guys how to go into this website for now, click on this button, login, uh, put your password, put your username, and then click on the button, login, and everything will be done through the bot automatically, and we won't be like writing anything, it will all be done by code. So you can see right here, we have this website, and open up my code here, you can see that it's very similar to what we had before from the previous video, I just erased everything. Uh, like we're, we're just going to write the code between the page dot go to and the browser dot close. And also you can see that I changed the URL to be the URL from this website. So uh, I'm going to leave this link in the description so you can just copy and paste it on the go to and you can see that the bot will go to this website. So what is important for this? Well, first, before we actually start doing it, I, I got to teach you guys some concepts. The first concept is the idea of waiting. What do I mean by waiting? Well, imagine I go to this website and I click on login right here and I go to this page. Well, we all know that internets are not instant, so it, it, it will be it will have a delay, right? So the DOM won't be rendered immediately. There will be some inputs, some elements that will take a little bit more to render. Imagine if we have an image. An image will take a lot more to download than a simple input, right? So what happens with that? Well, the thing is, we can use some functions in Puppeteer that will allow us to tell the bot to wait for something to happen to then take the next action. And what do I mean by wait for? Well, there's actually two, three different, there's a bunch of different functions, but the main ones are three different functions. The first one is wait for selector. And what does it mean? Well, if I come here and say something like await dot page, no, await page dot wait for selector, what this does is it will first of all obviously go to the quotes to scrape and whichever selector I put inside of here, uh, it, will, it will the bot will wait for that selector to be to, to load, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, it's the, the our bot will open up the page. We'll go to quotes to scrape.com and if I put something over here like, um, let me see, I want to let me take a look at this thing right here. You can see that, uh, okay, this class right here, if I got this, and I simply put it over here, like this, I'm telling it, I'm telling our bot to wait for this for the element with this class right here to load to then continue, which is great, because now, if we want to make some extreme changes to some elements in our page, then we can just tell our bot to wait for those elements to load which will basically allow you to not commit a bunch of mistakes. This is something that whenever you have some errors, whenever you, you, your bot is not working, usually this is the problem because things don't load in instantly, which is something that is important to consider. There's also, for example, if you're navigating to another page, if we're here and we tell our bot to go to another page, then we can use the wait for navigation, which basically uh, it's pre pretty self-explanatory. It will just wait for the navigation to be uh, finished and the page to be loaded. And the final one is just the wait for function. You can see right here if I say wait for, uh, it's it's just a simple function where you can put a duration here in milliseconds. I can say something like 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds, and it will wait for three seconds to move on. It's almost like the delay function uh, or time.sleep if you use Python. Um, it's just waiting for the next thing to happen. So or, or waiting for the time you insert over here. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, we got to start working on our bot, right? So what do I actually need? Well, the bot is going to open up this page, and we actually need to come over here. And for in some way, we got to click on this link. So we got to click over here. So how do we actually do that? Well, let's do like, let's follow the procedure that I taught you guys in the previous videos, we got to inspect the element and take a look at this link to see if we can find anything. And this is what I mean by this website tries to make it a bit difficult for us. You can see that the link for login doesn't have any class or ID. It doesn't have anything. It's just a link with login as the href. We could use this as a way to 
to grab this element, but there's an easier way. You can see that at the top here, there's a div, it, like the, the link is inside a div called, which is called, which has a class name called call md4. This is for, they're using bootstrap. So this is just a bootstrap class. And what we can do is we can access uh, the element that is a link inside of a div with the class name call md4. And what do I mean by that? Well, you take, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Well, we can come over here and say something like, uh, for example, if I wanted to grab that, I'm just gonna grab it for now and just console log. So I, I can say something like const link equals to await, then page dot, actually I can evaluate, right? Yeah, I'll just evaluate. So for example, if we wanna grab this link right here, we could just say call MD and search for the element A inside of it. But what we actually want to do right now is I want to click on this link. And the great thing about this is that Puppeteer has a function called click, which you can click on links, you can click on buttons, you can click on everything, even just normal elements that doesn't do anything when you click. So we're going to use that to, to basically access that link. So we're going to say something like await page.click. And inside of the page.click, we can pass the selector for whatever we want to click, right? And what is the selector for this? Well, we want to select the element that has the class name of call md4. This is important. However, we also want to access the link inside of the inside of this uh, element right here, right? Because the link for login is inside of a div with this class name. So how do we distinguish that? Well, we can just say we can just put a space and say we want to grab the link or with the tag a inside of a div with this class. So this is the, the way you can access stuff inside of each other. And if we run this, it will click on, that, click on that link. Let's take a look. So let's come over here and let me open up my bot. You'll see that if I run, it's gonna open up the page and it closed because I, it's going too fast. I'll just uh, say await browser.close, let's run again. I'm removing the closing function. You can see that it went to our page perfectly, right? You can see we, we got here to this page then immediately he clicked on the button and went to the login page, which is great. However, we can't be sure that this will happen every single time, right? As I mentioned before, we have to make sure that we're actually, the that this link has loaded before we actually click on it. So let's take use and, and use one of the first functions I taught you guys. Let's say, before we click on the button, let's wait for it to load. So we're gonna say await page dot wait for selector. And inside of here, we can just pass for example, this selector right here, we were waiting for um, the div with this class name to load before we actually click on the link. Why? Because this is something that we need to do. We have to wait for stuff to load before we try to click on it or else our bot won't work. So now that we click on our page, what else do we want to do? Well, I told you guys that after clicking on this, I want to be able to write stuff as my username, write stuff as my password and click on the login button to actually log into our page, right? So how do we do that? Well, there's a very interesting function in, in Puppeteer called uh, page.type. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can just type on inputs whenever you want just by passing the value on a type and also the selector for the input. So why, how do we actually do that? Well, let's take a look here. I'm going to go over here. And I can just say something like await page dot type and inside of here I can pass two arguments the first one is the selector for example I could put something like input and the other one would be the value so I could say something like my username obviously input is very broad we would write my username in every single input if we did it this way and we don't want that we just want to write input in the username we just want to write the username in the username input and the password in the uh, password input so, but this is the basic idea, right? You can say page.type, put the selector and put the value. And also we can forget to wait for the input to load, right? Because that's something important. However, for now, we just gotta find a way to distinguish the username input from the password input. So how do we do that? Well, let's inspect element again and let's take a look. Well, you can see right here that for the input, for the username input, they made it a little bit easier for us right now because the, the username input has an ID of username and that's perfect, right? 
But wait, they also made it a bit difficult because you can see the label above it saying username, this thing right here, also has, actually it doesn't, it doesn't have an idea of, of username. That's perfect. There's only one element in our page over here which has an ID of username, which means that we can just reach for the username ID and we can query select for the element with the username ID and it will automatically know that it is the input, which is perfect, right? So what we can do is we can first say we want to wait for selector, we want to wait for the input with uh, the ID of username to be loaded. So we're waiting for this input to load. And then we want to type on the username on the element with the username ID. And we want to type something like Pedro tech, that's my username. Um, let's take a look at, how, at what's going to happen, right? So let's run this again, node index.js. Let's see what happens. It's going to open up, go to login, and you can see immediately erode page attack in the username uh, input. I actually don't like how immediately, like how it did it instantly. What I like to do is something like, uh, most people will think it's dumb, but I just think this is, it just makes it a lot cooler. And it's just coming over here and saying something like delay. We can pass an object with properties to this page.type. One of them is just delay and I can pass 100. And what this means is a delay of 100 is basically the typing speed of a normal person. So it will kind of look like it's a normal person writing. You'll see what happens. We're going to go to login and it's going to look like a normal person, right? You, you saw that it took a little bit more to write. Uh, that's totally unnecessary. I just like it that way for some reason. Obviously, if I'm scraping uh, with headless equal to true, then this doesn't matter at all because we won't be able to see anything. Uh, as I mentioned in the, in the first video, when you turn headless to true, uh, the browser doesn't even open, the bot just runs on the background, which is what usually people do. So I just leave it as delay 100 for now because I like looking the I like seeing the, the thing typing. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to start to type a password in the password input. I guess that since username input has an idea of username, password input would have an idea of password. And you can see clearly that this is the case. Password input has an idea of password. So let's do the same thing we did with username and let's type on the password thing and let's type a password, which is definitely not my password for my stuff. So <laughs> I'm just going to write password. Let's run again and let's take a look to see if everything is working. So node index.js and it opens up, types for username and then types for a password, which is perfect, right? You can see clearly and you might be asking, well, why did it wait for the username to be typed before it started typing on the password? Well, that goes back to the concept that I taught you guys in the first video. Since this is all asynchronous, it waits for this to be finished to then run the next line, right? Uh, and why is this different from the wait for selector? Because the await is all dependent in the code. For example, if I say await page.type username, it's going to wait for this to finish, this piece of code to finish, to then run this. But when I say await page.wait for selector, it's going to tell the browser to wait for the page to load. So it's all dependent on the page loading, right? So now that we did this, we want to be able to log in, right? You see that if I click here on login in my, like if I actually close this, if I come over here and I type whatever in the website and I click on login, it actually logs in. It, it's, it's like a demo website. It's just for web scraping. So you can see we are logged in because it says here you can log out. So that means we are logged in and we actually just want to click on that button. So let's take a look at the button to grab some information from it. I'm going to inspect the uh, inspect element, the button, and you can see that for like, it looks like it's an input, not a button. It's an input of type submit. And let's take a look more. It has a value of login, which is great. And also there is a class of button and button primary. I'm going to use this button button primary as the selector. I don't know if there's another button with this, but I'm going to use that. So let's grab this right here. And uh, we can now come over here and we can use the function we used for the link called page dot click. But instead of clicking on a link, we're going to click on the button, right? So let's say await page dot click. And let's try to click using this selector. By the way, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Uh, you, with, with web scraping, it's 100% just uh, like trying and testing and seeing if it works or not. But what I think, I think it's going to work because 
I don't know if there's an, I don't see another button in the screen. So this might be only the, the only button. And this is the class for that button. And why did I put it? I put two dots because like it's the, the class has two, uh, like the button has two class names, right? You saw over here that if we inspect element, it has two things right here. One is button and the other is button primary. This is something from Bootstrap. So if you don't know Bootstrap, don't worry. So let's try clicking on this and let's see if we actually log in. Let's save this. Let's run the bot again. Node index.js. And you can see that it goes to this. It writes everything and it clicks on the button, meaning it's working. And you can see over here, it says logout, which means it's perfectly working. We were able to log in into this page and we can, we can literally like, you can make this, you can do whatever you want with uh, being able to type and click on stuff. This is how people make like bots that are able to uh, log in into accounts and do stuff. And we're definitely going to be working with that. I'm planning on using everything we learned to make something like a, a bot that is able to log into a Instagram account and comment on, on pictures. Obviously, that's I'm not advertising or condoning. Uh, spamming like never but I'm just saying that this is something you can do and it teaches a lot about web scraping in general so yeah I really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next I'm continuing this series because I really think that I really enjoy teaching this series I know that uh, my, my supporters my, my viewers are usually wanting more react stuff but I believe that if you guys like give give, give uh, Puppeteer a chance, it's really awesome. I'm going to continue posting. I'm going to finish the series. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe because I'm posting every single day. And I see you guys next time.